Howdy folks, Dread Shells here, and welcome back to another World of Tanks video. And today we're going to be looking at a game in the EBR90. This is the Tier 9 French Wheelie combat car. It's not a traditional scout. scout. And we are on the cliff map. And I was really looking forward to... Um, uh, showing you guys this game today not because you know it was some huge statistical result or everything but it's it it displays a lot of um a lot of tactical things that are, are fun to talk about so um we'll talk about the matchmaking real quick that we're in so um first of all the map is i think one of the most important if not the the most important thing um when you're looking at um, about how things will affect the battle. We're on cliff. Not a very good scout map. Um, vision doesn't really matter too much. Um, definitely not early game. Um, mid game to late game, the vision definitely can matter uh, if the battle progresses that long. But uh, definitely, you're not playing your traditional spotting role. Um, in a scout usually on this map. Um, the other thing is we're top tier and two scouts on each side. The enemy team also have an EBR 90, um, two already per side. Um, there is a few fast mediums on each team, a few quick dist tank destroyers on each team. Um, but this is pretty favorable matchmaking for us as far as the composition of the teams, like as far as heavies, um, tanks with armor, the speed of the enemy tanks in particular. Um, so I'm going to do something in this battle that I never do, almost, or I should say almost never do, at the beginning of a battle on Cliff from this north spawn, and that is to actually go to the sniper corner in D1. Now, I'm not saying that it was the right choice to make in this battle, it just happened to be what I did. Um, generally, this is not a good thing for you to do in a scout. You should go over to E6 at the beginning of a battle, usually, or or three, F3. But uh, but that's what I did. So before I ramble too much longer, I'll explain the battle decisions as I go along. If I made the correct choice or the bad choice. I never hide from when I think I've made a bad choice, and I tell you guys straight up. So that's how we learn. So let's just get started. But there's a lot of things that happen in this battle. It's a really hard-fought battle. Um, it was really tricky to win, uh, and it took a lot of effort. Um, spoiler alert, we do win the battle. <laughs> but how we get there, it was really difficult. And uh, I'll show you guys how we did that. So initially my thinking here, going about here right away, is that I'm in a really fast wheelie. And since my vision doesn't matter too much uh, on this map, what I could possibly do here is spot any quick enemy tanks that might be crossing here on the low side and get a free shot or two in on them as they go in. I don't see any enemy tanks in the first 30 seconds. So generally that's when you would really fast tanks, enemy team use this low approach unless they decide to do it late. First mistake of the battle I make right here. Going to this um, reactive position and then crossing this late. This is really bad, really dangerous. Somebody could be sitting in this position here and there could be snipers back here, further back here and I could get completely wrecked. So this is a really bad decision. If you're gonna loop through this this open draw here at the beginning of a battle in your fast tank, do it right away at the beginning of the battle. Don't wait, because if you cross late, the enemy guns will be set up generally, and you'll take a lot of damage and usually die. So that was my first mistake of the battle. Luckily, we get away with it. Looks like the enemy team weren't in position yet. Spot the VK. It was a bad shot to take there, considering his angling. 
I was optimistic. Tried to aim for like the back side of his hole, but it didn't matter because he was still really well angled. Crossing here late is a mistake, and it's not at the same time. So it's I'll go into free cam here and explain what I'm what I'm thinking. Hello, let's move out the camera a little bit. Um so because I put myself in a kind of a bad early positioning um, over here at the beginning of the battle where this TVP is, I, I kind of left myself no choice about how I can redeploy. Yes, I'm a wheelie, and yes, I can like drive back around and come up about this way, but that takes a lot of time, and, and the battle progresses a lot in, in that amount of time. So I just want to cross right away, get up here, and eventually start putting side pressure on the tanks that are sitting over here where this EBR is um, on the side. Guys, when you're playing Cliff, this is the most important tactical position on this map right here. You have to win this area right here. The one, two lines are purely reactive, defensive, usually very hard to assault. Same thing for the other side of the lighthouse. On top of the hill isn't as good as it used to be. You still can do a little bit up there, but it's not near as good as what the, it used to be before they changed it, changed it to HD. Um, but the main reason that this position is so important, if you can win this area right here, you can put a ton of pressure on the enemy tanks that might be sitting here if you're from the north spawn, and of course from the other side if you're from the south spawn. And if you can drive the enemy tanks here away, that means you can blow in like this, put a lot of vision pressure on the enemy snipers that are back here, put lots of uh, rear flank pressure on the enemy tanks that are sitting over here by the lighthouse, and spot base campers and artillery. So this position right here, up the mini-map, E3, F3, write it down in your notebooks. I see so many people underestimate this position and leave this position vacant. This is the most important area on cliff to win. Okay, got that out of the way. But yeah, crossing here again late is bad, but I kind of have to at this point. Okay. Sorry for the weird audio bug there. It does something. I pause and then restart with a wheelie tank. Okay, so now, luckily for us, the enemy have left this area unchallenged. Take a shot. There's a high likelihood that I would get spotted. You need to be careful how far you reverse there because there's a little there's a little position right here. Nope, sorry. There's a there's a sniper position right here. So when you're reversing back down into cover, um I'm reversing here because there's two artillery, right? And so I, I wanna get far enough it back down to where it's really hard for them to shoot me. Um, but you don't want to reverse too far because there's a, a sniper position right here. In fact, I'm reversing a little too far because anyone sitting here probably could shoot. The other thing that you need to know about using this position is that it is not mirrored to the other side. You can get shot from, from K, K5, this position right here. You can get shot. So you need to be really on your toes if you get spotted and anticipate when you get spotted, okay? But there's a cool thing that you can do if you are left uncontested in this position. I might have taken a shot there, kind of a low percentage shot that it would hit. If I hit, it, it would have pen, but I took a shot there. That tree right there on the left was a direct line of sight in between me and him. That is why the T-54 did not spot me on my first shot. But you noticed that when I shot him the second time, I got spotted because there was no longer a tree in between me and him. Now, when you're when you're making those kind of tactical you know, positioning decisions of trying to prevent yourself from getting spotted when you're shooting, remember, the tank that you're shooting at isn't the only tank that can spot you. So you gotta stay on your toes. But it's really awesome that the enemy have left this position vacant because it allows me to actually put some vision pressure. And this is what you can do from this position. You can spot the enemy 
campers that are sitting in the back on the 1-2 lines. Our IS-3 puts a good shot in there. Um, unfortunately, I think not many of our team are in a good angle to shoot these guys, other than um, the IS-3 and our artillery. Um, notice that the EBR-90 crossed up underneath me below the cliff directly below me, and that works a lot like the hill luckily already missed me there that works a lot like the hill on on uh, mines where if you win the hill and the enemy will sit directly below you in proximity detect you you need to be always ready to drive into some sort of cover um i see the ebr driving directly at me here again and i know he's trying to proximity detect me again so i reverse away so he doesn't proximity detect me All right, so I'm looking for shots, trying to figure out, um, looking for spots, looking for maybe shots, and not not noticing this T54 mod one's engagement with the with the with the Progetto and the T54 until um, it was too late. So that was some bad reaction time on me. If I was paying more attention, I could have shot these guys at least one more time there. Got a shot out on the Progetto here, and remember. When you're out in this position here, um, you're kind of out on a, in the open on, a, on an island, and I need to relocate again here. I need to get away, but I'm waiting here too long. This is another mistake. I should have ran away back around the other side of the hill, and I take a lot of damage for it. So I, this was a really bad misplay. What I'm doing right now, what I should have done right away after I shot that Progetto, I should have ran away back here to this. Some bad driving here. Okay, so now the game isn't looking very good. We're we're down three tanks, and it looks like they have a really good positioning on on their um, on the map. But they're starting to make really really bad decisions here. I spot the Brigetto there as he tries to climb up the lighthouse road, and we get him wrecked. We shoot him once, already hits him, and then we finish him off. We spot the Scorpion, no, rather our Scorpion probably spots their Scorpion and uh, relocating, so I put myself in a position to shoot him as he's relocating. Try to go for an HE pen there on the side of the uh, EBR. Really tricky to do that with the wheels, but not so tricky to do it with the Scorpion. Take a nice big chunk out of him, and now we can just finish him off really easily with another HE round. And now I'm switching back to APCR because I'm going to be shooting at this T10 here. I was amazed at how fast this T10 was. This is a heavy tank, guys, with decent armor. Look how fast he's driving. And that was a really important uh, kill to get. Um, if I didn't get that kill, we were, would be in a pretty big bind. But for some weird reason, um, the enemy aren't continuing to pressure us in the middle there, and I'm not sure why. Fortunately, had HE loaded there. wasn't really paying attention. But I'm really confused about where this T-49 is. Remember when he initially drove up into the middle, and uh, when I shot after I had shot the Progetto the first time? I haven't seen him since, so I'm not sure where he is. Get another HE round loaded in the queue here, because the Kanon and Yag Panzer has really soft armor, and you can pen him pretty easily with high explosive ammo. We do get a pen there, but unfortunately, it doesn't high. You know, get, we don't get a very good damage roll out of it. I always recommend if you guys are playing the EBR ninety, carry a lot of HE ammo. I carry about ten rounds. So right now, we're, we've actually encapsulated the enemy positioning. Even though this is this is I have. Uh, pause the game in a while, so I'll explain a recam here. So it's kind of weird what's happened in this battle. The enemy have superior numbers, um, and at at a certain point, um, far more HP than us, hit points, right? But they have very poor deployment and positioning. Look at the mini map. We control about 
quarters of the mini-map, as far as angles. All the enemy tanks are in this section right here, which means we have better angles of fire on them than they do on us. And as long as they aren't challenging us to retake those positions, we can exploit that. The main risk that I have in playing this ridge line is the enemy EBR. So I'm continuing to use this position, and I'm I'm my whole goal here is to shadow this EBR and try to get him out of the game. Because if I can get him out of the game, then I will have a much easier time in in winning the battle. The main goal in progressing from this point on, as far as our entire team is concerned, is to try and spot the sniper perch right here. Fortunately, our T30, when he moved up to this house here, he was taking the arty fire from back here in the corner of the map, and uh, and uh, he's not going to live too much. Unfortunately, um, the EBR-90 doesn't have the best view range in the world. Sorry about the weird audio bug there. Got spotted. This is really bad. So I'm going to try and dodge here. Hopefully make it harder for Artie to hit me. Dodged one Artie shell there. And our T-30 goes down. And we're still down three tanks. But for some weird reason, the enemy team are not testing us, right? They're not trying to retake positions on the map. Really bad shot right there. Didn't give near enough lead. Push on a fast moving target like the EBR there. Notice the T-54 peaking here. Really unlucky to not hit the lower plate of the T-54. I'm above him so it shouldn't... I shouldn't really be aiming for his lower plate. I should be going through the hole anyway, but just because of how he was angling his hole up there. But already take a shot there and expect to get spotted by the EBR, but we don't for some weird reason. Our already takes a shot at him uh, and misses. We respot the one shot T54. I really want to get this guy's gun out of the fight. But his hull's just angled way too well. I know I'm going to get spotted there, so I'm going to try and zoom away here, make it harder for Artie to hit me here. Get around behind the hill, the center Coliseum hill here, for protection from Artie. And now I'm going to try and see if I can find this T-49, because where has this T-49 been the whole, like, last three months? We haven't seen him in a long time. And it's really strange, because, you know, he's been... He was really aggressive when he moved into the middle there initially, so I'm thinking maybe he's on the top of the hill, um, and he's waiting up here. So I'm ready to do a one-on-one -on -one here, even with my hit points. I just need to find where this T-49 went, and he's not on top of the hill, which is really strange. So we know he's not up here. I'm trying to be really careful driving here. It's a, a lot sometimes tricky to maneuver on terrain like this in a wheelie. Okay, so we know the T-49 is not up there. So I'm trying to figure out how am I going to continue to put... find where the enemy is, right? Because they have a lot better numbers and we don't have a lot of tanks left to cover me. I do have the S-1 behind me for support. So I figured, hmm, I'm going to drive into this bush here. This is where the EBR 90's view range really hurts. When you control this ridge on the enemy's side of the middle here, and you're trying to spot their base campers, it's much better to... Aha! There's the T-49. It's much better to have a tank with um, full view range. Um, 445 is the max spotting distance, so plus cutting into camera rating. Usually you want something around 500 meters of view range to, to spot things decently. Uh, but we don't have that kind of view range, so we have to use our mobility to, to help us spot. The SDA-2 tried to move up, and uh, our team did a good job taking him out. T-54 gets respotted there. So now... Oh, S1 moved into the same bush as me. So now I'm going to tr try and see if I can respot the sniper's first. And finally, finally we, we spot the charioteer. Lucky combination happened right there. I'll explain what happened there. Um, if I can get out of sniper view. 
Oh, I guess I can't. There we go. So what happened there is um, I crossed right here just as he started to move. So his camel rating dropped, and I think there was a gap in between the rock and the bush that he was in. So it was really lucky timing that the time that I was crossing here to try and spot this is also the same time that he made it really easy for me to spot it. So that was really lucky. Normally it's a lot harder to spot tanks that are uh, sitting back here. Um, but now we have him spotted and now we have vision pressure on him, right? So we're forcing him to get a good shot on him. He takes a lot of damage, which is awesome. The team were paying attention, which is awesome. EBR is still rolls scouting proximity detecting the, the ridge there down below on the G line there and before. And now we're gonna go try to go in for the kill here on the on the charioteer. We know that he's down to one shot because of all of the damage that he took. Last spotted him. We want to make a shot count here. We're really careful about how we drive around there so our our reticle isn't all funky. Now we want to keep moving here uh, because there is enemy arty still. Our our arty takes out the enemy T forty nine. Trying to wrap around there. Now the it's just the EBR here on the on the outside. So we're gonna take our time with this shot. Honestly, didn't give quite enough lead there, and we only clipped the back of his tank, but luckily it hit the right side of his hitbox, and uh, we get him taken out. So now it's just cleanup mode now. Spot the enemy arty there. Now we know that the T-54 is a one-shot, so I'm just like, oh, he's a one-shot. I'm just going to go in here, clean him up here, take a shot before I dive off, and of course I low roll. And now there's a really high chance that he's going to kill me, and I try to avoid his gun long enough, and I do... And thank goodness for no team damage, because I would have died to my own arty there. And now it's just cleanup mode here on the M5355, who I shot earlier, so I know that he's a one-shot, right? So I'm just going to go in on him. Might kill me. Try to see if I get an angle on him from behind, but I'm just going to go around here in front. He has the better reaction time, and it looks like I do. And I, uh, I kind of jump up on the rocks there, and a rock climber there for a little bit so a lot of happened in this battle a lot ha excuse me talking with the cold is really difficult uh a lot happened in this battle um initially i'll go into free cam here if it allows me to um generally when you're playing on this map scout you don't have a lot of options kind of a medium with no armor Try to get yourself, use your mobility to try to get yourself uh, in a position to get the first shot off and relocate. The main thing that allowed us to have success in this battle is that we challenged here. The enemy didn't send any tanks over here into F3 and F4. Like I said at the beginning of the video, this area over here, if you look on the minimap, F3 is the most tactical important position on cliff in a pub match. It's completely different in Clan Wars. There's lots of different strats that you can do, of course. But in a pub match, that is the most important tactical decision uh, position for, for you guys to, to win. Um, we had to do a lot of relocating, a lot of floating around. Um, I did make several misplays in this battle, almost died for it, but stayed alive. And the enemy made more mistakes than we did, which at the end of the day, generally will have you win the game. Um, floating on this ridge is really tricky. Enemy are this aggressive underneath you. Stay on your toes. But you saw what you can do when you ridge line on the enemy side. You can spot enemy campers back here. And if you have playing in a traditional scout, you can you can you can spot campers that are sitting. So that ha a, a scout that has more view range. So. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video, and um, it was a really tricky battle. Um, I had to put a lot of effort in to win the battle. Um, I mean, EBR made it really difficult um, for me to to flush out the enemy positioning, and I had to be really careful because we were down most of the battle in, in tanks, and they could have overwhelmed 
any of our positioning at any time, but they played really, really conservatively and didn't use their numbers advantage. Um, and that is the main reason why they lost the enemy team. So, um, I hope you guys get some ideas on, on, on what to do when uh, you get into that position and know how to work that now. Um, I wish you guys the best of luck out there. Happy hunting and take care.